Fifteen years ago, on a sunny March afternoon in a British high school biology class, I was so bored. My teacher, Mr. Baba, was droning on about the mitochondria as I watched dust particles dance in the afternoon light. Biology was a list of facts that I memorized. It didn't, it didn't feel like it had anything to do with me. Until Mr. Baba turns to the board and draws a square, then divides it into four boxes. He began filling in the boxes, showing how blue eyes and brown eyes pass from parents to children. And in that moment, watching him sketch genetic inheritance, something clicked. Biology was no longer a list of facts to memorize, it was architecture, precise code that writes us into existence. And as he explained, I understood even more. This wasn't just about eye color. This was about everything. Every breath, every heartbeat, every way my body would grow strong or grow sick. That little square felt like a door cracking open. The idea that health was personal. After high school, I'm back in Riyadh, and I'm talking to my mom about what I should study in university. I remember Mr. Baba's Punnett Square and mentioned my interest in genetics. But I was also torn because I wanted to become a computer scientist like her. Then she asked me, Don't you want to discover the gene that causes cancer? That question became my calling. I said yes, I left everything familiar. I earned my PhD from Oxford, becoming Saudi Arabia's first Rhodes Scholar. And somewhere in those years of chasing my mother's impossible question, I realized something that transforms her premise entirely. There is no single gene that causes cancer. Disease rarely comes from one broken gene. It emerges from the combination of many genetic changes, plus the life we live. What we eat, where we work, how we sleep, the stress we carry. And if we can read those combinations early enough, we might be able to change the outcome. Those four boxes had pointed me towards something bigger than I'd ever imagined. The power to see what's coming and to do something about it. That's precision health. And it starts with a DNA test. How many of you have had a DNA test done before? Wow, that's fewer than I expected. I literally only see two hands. Well, I have. I got a genetic test done before, because during my PhD, I wanted to see what precision health meant for me. I ordered a genetic test from a well-known company, and I clicked through to a result about a type of cancer. The page loaded, and it said, we don't have enough data from people with ancestry like yours to estimate your likelihood of developing this condition. Here I was, someone who devoted years to studying genetics, and the machine couldn't see me. I was invisible in my own field. Two truths crystallized. First, precision health is real. We can read patterns in DNA that allow us to personalize prevention and treatment in ways that would seem like magic to our grandparents. Second, that magic has borders, and I lived outside them. 
The data that trains these models, the genetic maps that guide medical decisions, they're overwhelmingly from people of European ancestry. Around 80% of the data, in fact. Arabs are barely a footnote. We make up less than 1% of the world's genetic data. When borders exist in data, borders appear in care. That sentence on my screen was a boundary that said, this precision, it's not for you. Tonight's theme is breaking boundaries. This is the boundary I want us to break. Our Prophet said, Tadawaw, fa'inna alladhi khalaqa da' khalaqa dawa'. Seek treatment. The one who created illness also created its remedy. The remedies of our time are written in data. But if that data doesn't include us, how can we seek what was created for us? Let's make this practical. When I say prediction models, I don't mean destiny. I mean patterns. Thousands or millions of DNA changes working together plus everything about how we live. Our lifestyle, our circumstances, our behavior, our family history, all of it. It's more like a weather forecast than a fact. If the forecast says, dust storm, what do you do? You close your windows and stay indoors. Do you control the sky? No, the dust storm may or may not come, but you can prepare. Right now, we can similarly prepare for a forecast of many common diseases, like diabetes, heart disease, and several types of cancer. Prediction models based on genetic information can identify who might benefit from earlier and more frequent screening, or from being more aggressive about their lifestyle and routine checks. They give us a head start. Sounds great, right? But there's a catch. If you train a model mostly on one group, it won't automatically fit everyone else. Accuracy drops the farther your genetic background is from the data the model learned from. It's like borrowing a shirt made for someone else. It covers you, but it doesn't quite fit. That's what the sentence on my screen was telling me. The shirt wasn't cut for me. What I've discovered since as well is that using genetics to inform prevention and treatment isn't future science or future medicine. There are medical guidelines recommending it right now for prescribing some common medications or treating cancer. And in some cases, it's standard clinical practice. But those medical guidelines and those standard practices were written by studying people who don't look like us, based on DNA that isn't ours. Not to say they necessarily won't work for us, but just like a shirt made for someone else, they may not quite fit. Let me put this in one line I hope you'll remember. Precision isn't precise without us. Breaking this boundary isn't a luxury. It's about life-saving decisions. It's about accuracy, about making sure that when medicine promises precision, it delivers on that promise for everyone. And you know what makes me optimistic? Saudi Arabia is uniquely positioned to lead this transformation. We have a young tech-savvy population, a wise leadership, and ambitious healthcare vision. We have, we have an increasingly integrated healthcare system. So solving this problem can start here, with us. Legitimate research studies are happening here in Saudi through our 
hospitals and universities. Your participation puts us on the map, writes us into the equation. We need Saudi, Gulf, and Arab data sets in the studies that build these prediction models and guide clinical decisions. It's not about separate solutions for separate peoples. We need the full spectrum of human genetic diversity. Our Saudi DNA, Japanese DNA, Norwegian DNA, Kenyan DNA. Every population we add to the data sets makes medicine more precise for everyone. One more thing we have in Saudi that makes us uniquely positioned to lead this transformation, and most importantly, is the genetic diversity. Whether it's through the millions of Saudis or through the millions who come here every year from around the world to Mecca, we can make the standard for the world. Fifteen years ago, Mr. Baba drew four boxes on the board and changed my life. He showed me that biology has patterns. What I've learned in the years since is that patterns only have power if they include the people they're meant to serve. The boundary between who gets precision health and who doesn't, that's the one we break. Starting with four boxes, ending with millions of lives improved. Precision isn't precise without us. Thank you.